This is a uh, video about how to calibrate the Furman AR-117. Uh, first off, they made a few different versions of these. Uh, you probably don't have the super old one from 1989, which reads signal processing. They usually say um, power conditioning. So if it says signal processing, you have the older one, and this video doesn't uh, cover uh, the old ones. Sorry. Most likely, you have a new one, which is right here. See how it reads power conditioning? That's the newer one. That's what most people have. It still says AR-117 on it. And this video is going to show you how to calibrate this. Uh, before we get started, you will need uh, some tools here. Firstly, since we're working with something that's uh, got potentially dangerous voltage, you should have, uh, you know, safety goggles, rubber gloves. Um, you should also really have a uh, isolation transformer. You can look on other videos about what this does, but uh, it just uh, makes sure that you're not connected to the rest of your house or the rest of your workshop. I highly recommend you get one of these things. It makes it really safe. Now, okay, so th this isolation transformer is plugged into my wall. It comes out here and into the... Uh, AR-117. So uh, anyway, so get yourself an isolation transformer, use some safety equipment, and as far as tools, you'll need a, an Allen key, which is 5 64th inch, okay? Get yourself a good set. Make sure it's made in USA, all right? 5 64. There you go. Um, and then you'll need a, a driver. It's a quarter inch, as shown here. I recommend getting a bigger one, which has a real handle on it, and get a, a nice socket on there. You can use a, a, a screwdriver, but just make sure you don't use a piece of junk, you know, like your eyeglasses screwdriver. Don't screw around with toys, because then you're going to, you know, mess up the head. Okay, get yourself a, a real driver, and the, uh, the tip on it is a number six uh, flathead, okay? Sorry, my camera takes a while to focus. So that's what you do, put the number six in. And we're gonna undo the first one right here. That's see how there's like no play, cause it's nice and tight. That's why you get a number six. Uh, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna use uh, this driver. And you slip it right on and get it right off. Now, I I've already um, gotten the other screws, so um, we're not gonna mess around with that. Save some time. You just use an Allen key and open up this one here. There you go. And now we can open up the lid cover and voila. Behold, the innards of the AR-117 voltage regulator. Now you're gonna see that there's, I haven't turned anything on yet, but that doesn't mean things can't still shock you. So be careful now that we've got the lid off. Um, there are four trim pots, little potentiometers. There's two here. Uh, and there's two here. Uh, so I think this one's for like uh, under voltage cutoff and the other one's for over voltage cutoff. And I forgot what this one does and it's really hard to get to. We're gonna be adjusting this one which reads um, R36. It's printed on the board here, okay? You're probably gonna have to do what I did which is bend this uh, uh, transistor slightly to the right here. So bend that gently and, and carefully. And uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert your uh, Allen key like so. Okay, that's okay if that falls to the chassis because there's not really anything to shock you there. And I guess we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. Uh, but before we do, I have to say one thing. Um, this is not a power strip, it's a voltage regulator. That you can just turn on and leave on all day long without it powering anything. This, however, is a voltage regulator. You can't leave any regulator on just sitting there doing nothing like a power strip can. If you're going to have this thing on, make sure it's sending power somewhere. And um, I recommend at least 100, 150 watts of a load. Uh, and that's about one amp of current. Okay, so make sure it's sending at least one amp or 150 watts uh, somewhere. For this demonstration, um, I'm going to be using this drop light, which takes up 470 watts, or 3.8 amps. Now, before we turn things on and get our fingers in here, I just want to say this video is for educational purposes only. You really should have a licensed, proper, whatever person working on it, okay? Because you really can uh, hurt yourself and others. 
All right, uh, the last thing you'll need is this tool is uh, a kilowatt or a multimeter. I've got one right here. I've got a Fluke uh, 87. It's a true RMS meter. I've got that already turned on to volts there. Um, so that's that. We don't need scissors. Uh, and this kilowatt thing is really cool. Uh, I paid, like, I think, 25 bucks at Menards, and it can do all this cool stuff. Um, you can just press uh, watts, hertz, uh, current for amps. Uh, you can for uh, renewable energy and uh, solar panels. You can calculate that. We're just going to use the volt setting to calibrate this thing. And I think we are ready to turn it on. Stand back, gentlemen. All right. So we've got an output there. That's the analog reading, and this is the kilowatt right here. 200. Now, that's because we don't have anything plugged into it. Let's do this without killing ourselves. Carefully. There we go. Our drop light is on. Our work light, rather. All right. Now we've got a load, and that's approximately what my studio uses. It's about 4 amps. As you can see, the voltage dropped a little bit because we've got a, uh, a load. 119 volts. Now what this does, this R36, it kind of tricks the, the, the computer here, the motherboard. That's the daughter board. This is the motherboard. It tricks this circuitry in the motherboard to thinking that there's a different input voltage. So when we turn this, you're going to see two things happen. Uh, one, you're going to see the voltage fluctuate on the light, and you're also going to see this go up, even though we're turning it down. Uh, it's weird. So this will, this will start to become, this will cease to become accurate and your voltage will change. So what we're gonna do is turn it slightly, carefully, gently, and you're gonna see that climb. And you should go over here and see the voltage drop. I usually have it right around here, uh, especially for tube amps. People who work on like vintage, vintage amplifiers, you can't have the voltage go too high, otherwise it really heats the tubes up, changing the sound. And also with those vintage capacitors that are, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old, you'll blow them out if the voltage gets too high. Just remember, if you're gonna have a different voltage other than, than 117, make sure you get yourself a labeler and, you know, type in that it's, you know, 113 volts. Put a label above this front outlet and then put another label on the back so nobody gets any surprises, all right? And um, so as you can see, it's reading uh, that the input voltage is, come on camera, I think that's, what is it, 126 is what it says. Um, that's obviously not right. It's 122 as you can see, uh, but the output is what we care about. Okay, we're gonna turn that the other way and see what it does. No, go wrong way. Clockwise. You can go all the way down too. You can see how the light fluctuates. See that? It goes dim and a little brighter. Um, again, I, I like to keep it right around 115, 116. So your your um, your LED light is going to read 123. It's going to read um, higher, higher than it actually is. Sorry that my camera takes so long to freaking focus, folks. Can my button do that? Hmm. All right. Anyway, um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, what else do I have to tell you? Uh, I think that's it. We went through this pretty quickly. I'm looking at my notes here. Make sure you know. Yeah. Um, I can't believe how little information there is about these things. Um, I've owned half a dozen of these things, and you can stop the video, we're done calibrating, but uh, I've owned half, about half a dozen of these things over the years, and they're, they're great. Just make sure you have a load on them. And um, yeah, I think that they started in uh, 1989, circa, and uh, most of them are, are born right around 94 or 95. This one I think is a 95 or a 96. They stopped, you, they stopped making these around 97, and um, in 1998, they came out with the uh, AR-1215, which um, is a little bit different. Instead of having a separate motherboard and a daughter board, as you can see here, uh, it's got just one circuit, is what I pulled up on my screen here. That's the AR-1215. And if you're trying to calibrate that, I've never owned a 1215, but I think it's this one potentiometer here. Yeah, you might want to call Furman before playing around with that. I don't know anything about the 1215. Anyway, that's uh, the video. I hope this video helps you. Um, leave your comments, please.